In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life that we would be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdoms. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death, but Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden, and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am, about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud. I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste to Daniel the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age! Now have your past sins come to turn, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, The innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me, under what tree you saw them together? Under the mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God waits for the sword to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. 
Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Let it speak to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths, for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Read from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the mouth of bound to Wallace, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Even though, as you all know, we have the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that talk about our Lord Jesus, in the person of Jesus himself, there's another gospel, some more good news for us. It's the gospel of the second chance. Our Lord Jesus was for this woman caught in adultery as he is for us, always working to get us to see he is incredibly interested in not only what a person had been, but also what a person could be. So Jesus never says that what we have done doesn't matter. Of course it matters. But Jesus wants to make sure that every person has a 
future as well as the past. Because the basic difference between Jesus and the Pharisees in our gospel here today, the Pharisees wished to deceive, to trap, to condemn. Whether it be this poor woman who was only being used by them, or the big trophy that they wanted to condemn Jesus himself. Human nature is terribly interesting. From back in our days, all the way back to elementary school, to the office politics of those who were we work with today, to those who struggle with gossip in their retirement years, there's a certain thrill to condemn, to put someone down, to attack someone. But what if they're innocent, like Susanna in the first week? Well, let's not get stuck in the details. It's amazing the attitudes that some people can have. But Jesus knows something. His thrill comes from his power to forgive. That's what truly motivates our Lord. And so Jesus regarded the sinner, this woman, with pity. Pity that came from a deep, deep love. Just as we see with Daniel in our first reading. Was so moved with the innocence, but also with the courage of Susanna, that motivated by God, he defended her and shamed her accusers. Daniel was a beautiful foreshadowing of what Jesus would do on a much, much larger scale. But as loving as our Lord is, he knows better than anyone, and we better know it too, that love, even his mighty love, is not complete without the truth. Love, is, if it's supposed to be whole and complete, has to bring the truth with it. So what else does Jesus do here today? He forgives the woman, but he also challenges her. He did not say, after everybody was going to stone her, left, walked away, but it's alright, no worries. You can go about with your life as if nothing had ever happened. Jesus did not say, it's alright, but rather, Everything's been wrong. But now it's time to set things right. Change your life completely. Go and sin no more. Now, how is the woman, how will any of us, when we are forgiven by the Lord, be able to go and sin no more? Well, when you go, you're not leaving Jesus behind. You're taking him with you. If you truly want to sin no more and start living that brand new life, you go all right, but you go straight to the heart of our Lord, to the God who gives you the gospel of the second chance. Placing our trust in the God's hands, let's come before him now with our prayers and intercessions. For those preparing to be received into the church, that they will remain faithful to Christ all the days of their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have lost their lives to the coronavirus, that they may truly rest in peace in the eternal presence of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a speedy end to the spread of the virus, that God will protect all of us from all forms of danger, both physical and spiritual, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life, especially from our own parish community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, the hungry, the unemployed, and those who suffer from lack of love and affection, that our Lord Jesus may shower his love and mercy upon them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will continue to bless us even during these days of trial with an abundance of peace in our hearts, in our homes, and throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to live with greater faith in Jesus and his ability to give us life both here and for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions for which this Mass is being offered, for the repose of the soul of Edwin Rivera, for birthday blessings for Elizabeth Delgado and Joe Lucero, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please take a moment to bow your heads and in silence ask God for whatever you need.
For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for receiving our prayers. May we never take for granted the peace that comes from being in your presence. And we ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and of all this holy church. Grant we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we bring before you as the first fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, but through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world was received, has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. So, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we are glad. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Now for this morning's act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself holy to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. Strengthen by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we constantly be cleansed of our faults by following Christ Hasten our steps upward toward you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host.